Hi everyone, it's Chloe from the Arizona Science Center coming to you live for our 1 p.m. demonstration. Today we're going to be talking about brains, but we're actually not going to be talking about human brains. We're going to be talking about different kinds of animal brains. So if you don't really like anything kind of squeamish, I do have some actual animal brains here, but they are going to be in a resin casing just so you know what to expect when it comes up, okay? So I have a frog, a snake, a fish, a rabbit, a pigeon, and actually a cockroach. So if you'd like to check it out, please do. We do have these demonstrations every day at 1 p.m., Monday through Saturday, and we also do our early learning lives at 9.30, Mondays through Saturdays as well. Okay, so I know I said we were gonna be talking about animal brains, but just so you have some context, this is kind of what a human brain looks like. I printed out this little picture for you folks to see. So it's not gonna be this really colorful one here on this side, it's actually gonna be more this kind of pinkish gray color. Okay, so take a good look at that, kind of make some observations about what you're seeing. So it looks like it's pretty round up here, but it's a really general kind of oval shape, right? So the animals that we're gonna be looking at today have some brain shapes that might be a little different from ours. What do you think? Which one do you think is gonna have the largest brain? Be sure to comment what you think. Okay, so the first one we're actually gonna look at is a frog. So I have my frog brain encased in resin. I will bring it closer. I have this little magnifying glass. Hopefully it translates well over the computer screen. Maybe you'll just see a reflection of yourself with it though. So that's a frog brain. What do you think? Does this look similar to a human brain at all? I don't think this looks like our brain whatsoever, but some similarities that these animals do have with our brains are what we call the different parts of the brain. So first part of the brain we're gonna talk about is the olfactory lobe. So that's how that is spelled if you're curious, olfactory lobe. The olfactory lobe is going to be your perception of odors, right? So when you smell something, your olfactory bulbs are located somewhere right around there in your nasal area, that's gonna pick up those scents. And you're gonna be able to kind of translate that into information into your brain so you can be like, mm, it smells like french fries or mm, it smells like cookies. So animals have these parts of the brain as well. Now, do you think a frog has a big olfactory or do you think it has a small olfactory? Where do you think it is? So the frog's olfactory system is actually right there. I don't know if you can kind of see it. It's almost square shaped. So that's what that looks like on the frog. All right, the next animal we'll take a look at is going to be our fish. So this is what the fish brain looks like. I'll bring the magnifying glass, hopefully this works. I can't really tell if this is working or not, so I hope it is. I hope you can kind of get a good look at what this brain looks like. So that's our fish brain. Now, does it look similar or different to our frog brain? What do you think? I think it looks relatively similar. It has those kinds of bulbs, but it also has that long area. What do you think the long area might be? So that long area is actually part of their spinal cord. So that's what we have too, right at the back of your neck and your spinal cord is actually considered a part of your nervous system or your brain area because your spinal cord is made up of a bundle of nerves and it's going to be transporting that information. I see that you can actually see when I hold up the brains with the magnifying glass. That's good to know. I'm glad you can take a good look at that. You also can get a good look at my big head too, I think. But yeah, this is our fish brain. Pretty neat, right? Pretty cool that they have a relatively similar shape, but also very different too. But they have their spinal cord coming down along there towards the bottom as well. All right, next up is gonna be our snake brain. Do you think the snake brain is gonna be bigger or smaller than the fish brain? Well, this is actually our snake brain. So that's what that looks like. So if you guessed bigger, you were kind of right. If you guessed smaller, you're also kind of right. It's a little bit longer than the fish brain that I have, but it's also just a little bit thinner, right? It doesn't have those same kind of lobe areas that are protruding out of the side. Now, what do you think those lobes were, those big ones? Those are actually going to be part of its optics area. So if you've ever watched our demonstration optics of the eye where we dissect a cow eyeball, that's gonna be kind of the same thing. Your optic lobe is going to be processing all of the visual information that you see. It's gonna take all of that information in and be able to translate it into what you do so that way you can recognize the things that you're seeing. Now my next brain is going to be the largest of the brains that I have here. This is a rabbit brain. 
So this is what that looks like. Now this one looks very different from some of the other brains that we've seen, I think. It's a lot larger. It's also going to be a little bit more round. And from the side, I actually think it looks a little bit more closely similar to what our brain looks like. They're also mammals, so that kind of makes sense. Rabbits also are going to have their medulla oblongata. So we have a medulla oblongata as well. That's going to be what controls all of our actions that we're not really thinking about doing. So whenever you breathe, you don't have to think every time, you know, deep breath in and out. That's a really good way to calm yourself down, but it's actually just going to be a nice way for your brain to be able to do it all on its own. It's currently processing that information for you so you don't have to think about it, which is pretty nice. Now the next animal that I have also looks pretty similar to the rabbit brain, but it's going to be a little bit smaller. So this is my rabbit brain, or this is my, sorry, pigeon brain. This one's kind of a lot smaller, but it's got those big eyes, that large optic lobe area. And another part of the brain that animals have, as well as us, is what's going to be our cerebellum. Now, the cerebellum is going to be what controls all of our voluntary motor movements. So whenever I wave to you, or if I clap my hands, those are all being controlled by my cerebellum. That's actually going to be processing that information for me. It's also gonna be a fairly large part of your brain. Now, this next one, I'm just gonna show it to you without the magnifying glass so you can see truly how small it is. This is my cockroach brain. Do you see it on there? It may look like just a fleck on your screen, but that is a cockroach brain. It's that really small thing right over there. Does that look similar to any of the brains that we've seen so far? Not really, right? It's really small, and when you think about it, it makes sense. Do roaches walk around with a really big head? Not really. They actually have some pretty small brains, but they also do very similar things, right? Roaches don't have to think about breathing in and out. Roaches can also see things. They can also take in their senses, their smelling. They have eyes as well. So all of that information needs to be processed in their brain. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching this live demonstration on animal brains. It was great to be able to share all of these really neat animal brains with you. Let me know which one you thought was really cool. If you like animal brains, maybe one day you'll study neuroscience and be able to learn all about the human brain. All right, we do these demonstrations again every day, 1 p.m., Monday through Saturday. We also have those early learning live demonstrations going on every morning, 9.30 a.m., Mondays through Saturdays. If you liked this content and you want to see more like it, we do have our content all uploaded onto our website at azscience.org. This week, we've also been doing an Earth Week challenge to celebrate Earth Week that happened earlier in the week. So if you want to be a part of that, send us your content all over on our Instagram at azscience. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day.